So the first thing I need to say is that these thoughts um, that I'm going to share with you are mostly not my own. They belong to the very brilliant Anne-Marc Chaudier, who unfortunately could not be here. So I'm basically here tonight as the vessel for her wisdom. And uh, what, what I'm going to talk about is silently patching the magic circle. What does this mean? So the concept of LARP taking place within a magic circle is quite familiar in LARP theory. And what it means is that in the LARP reality, the rules are different from what they are in the real world reality outside. So in a LARP, it might be that we're all vampires, or we're elves, or it's 1815, um, or um, we have sex by touching each other's arms. In the real world, none of those things are true, probably. And <laughs> at the point when the LARP starts, um, we transition into that magic circle. Play takes place within it. And beforehand, probably you've had briefings and workshops which are partly about what is it that's going to be different inside that magic circle than in the outside world? How do we behave and make it feel intact? And if we all do as um, we've been told and briefed, then the magic circle remains intact. Everyone has a wonderful time. That is, that is the theory. But is that really what happens? I realize now, because I watched the first half in the back, that most of you can't see the bottom part of the screen. And um, in top and bottom format memes, this is a bit of a drawback. So I'm going to have to ask you to imagine that the bottom text is extremely hilarious. And those of you who are, <laughs> those of you who are at the front, please don't spoil the secret and, and disappoint them. Let, them. let them believe. Let them believe. So we actually do already have some familiar ways in which we breach the magic circle during play. So for example, there may be meta techniques that allow you to go off game with another player. And this means basically creating a little bubble of real reality in which perhaps you talk with that other person, you calibrate um, your relationship, or you plan what you're going to do. When you don't need it anymore, you close the bubble and you come back into the LARP reality and you do whatever the thing was that was discussed. And that is all very cool. That is OK. Another way that we breach the magic circle during play is um, through steering play. You could think of this as perhaps rising above the magic circle, looking down on your character, thinking as yourself, what kind of play do I want to shape? How am I going to achieve that? And then when you're finished, you drop down into your character again, and you do the thing. So these are well understood um, techniques or functions. And the point about them is um, participants can do them voluntarily as much or as little as they want. And that is all fine and well and good. But dot, dot, dot. What um, I'm here to, to try and point out is that there is also a kind of silent and unacknowledged work that participants do. And it's more important for some roles within a lot than others, which is to kind of keep the magic circle intact by patching holes that appear in it or by um, like weaving where it's weak and it looks like a hole might appear. And this is work that designers and organizers implicitly expect of their participants, but I think it's very rarely acknowledged. So what am I talking about? Well, here is an example, calling the police. It's hilarious again, I promise. You. <laughs> so um, in LARP narratives, terrible things often happen. Atrocities take place. There are murders. Um, people have, have um, orgies, transgressive things go on. It might make sense for characters in that situation, if they are realistic people in, the, in a real type world, to call the police or some sort of other outside authority to descend on the place, um, arrest the malefactors, sort it all out, and um, everyone can be happy and, um, and relaxed who survived the, the massacre of, of murder manor. Um, or it might make sense for them as characters to just leave the place and look, let's not hang around any longer. We'll probably get murdered too. But in these kinds of LARP, it's a kind of an implicit rule that you don't do that, that that would be breaking the LARP in an important way. Because for a start, there actually are no police who could come and descend. But also, it's a kind of a given of the, 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 the kind of the tropes of the LARP are that the story's got to be completed by the characters who are there. No new characters can be added in. And the expectation is that people don't just leave before the end because it would make sense for their characters to do so. OK? So 
um, sometimes the designers will have provided a reason why you can't call the police. Like, for example, you're all snowed in, the telephone lines are down, if you go outside, you'll be eaten by wolves. They tell you this during the briefing, and you're like, OK, great, we won't call the police. Then. But often, um, they don't bother doing that because it's such a familiar trope. And then you can get this awkward ha situation where someone desperately trying to role play their character goes, oh, goodness, there's been another stabbing. Um, maybe we should call the police. Looks around anxiously. And they're looking for reassurance from another character who says, no, we can't possibly call the police because they couldn't get here in time. We're going to have to sort this out for ourselves and catch the stabber. And they're like, oh, thank goodness. And then, of course, they get, <laughs> they get stabbed five minutes later. But that was, that was applying a patch to the magic circle. There was an area of weakness where real reality threatened to break in, and someone slapped a patch over it. It's OK, we can go on um, pretending that um, there are no police, so they're inaccessible for whatever reason. OK, here is. Another thing is, in um, LARPs that have a kind of community structure, <laughs> if you play the role of a leader type within this community, then you have great power. And um, we all know what comes with that. There is great responsibility to patch the magic circle. Um, so for example, um, what, I, what we're talking about here is designers expect that leaders will issue decisions in a way that doesn't impact negatively on the play of others. The expectation is that the leader's freedom kind of ends where other players' play begins. So for example, I'm thinking a purely theoretical example, you understand, hypothetical. Um, if there's a lot that's set in a religious cult in which obedience is maintained by merciless torture of, of practically everyone, the leaders might have a change of heart and think, well, actually, this is a terrible way to retain loyalty. Wouldn't it be better and nicer for our cult if we said, OK, no more torture. Torture is abolished from now on. That would make perfect sense in character, but it means that the players who are playing torturers, who signed up for that and uh, are, are you know, leaning wholeheartedly into it, they would have nothing to do for the rest of the LARP. Maybe, maybe the LARP is such that they can start a rebellion over the leaders and reinstate torture. Maybe not. The, lead, the leader character, probably, the leader player probably doesn't know that, and so they would be reluctant, or they should be, to take such a big step. And even on a much smaller scale, if a leader's got to decide, should I promote this person? Should I fire this person? Then that's going to impact the play of that other participant. And so um, to, to know whether they can do that or not, they've essentially got to go off game, talk to the other character and ask, is this all right? Or go to the organizers and ask, do I have the freedom to, to do this? And this is a kind of a weakness in the magic circle because the leaders cannot just role play themselves as characters. They've got to consider the real reality of co-players being disappointed or frustrated in some way. So um, I think this is, this is kind of a slightly different kind of patching. It's reinforcing a kind of a weak part of the, of the magic circle before a hole appears in it. And uh, it, so it's kind of patching the fabric of reality. <laughs> and it is basically, it's a kind of steering. And it is referred to briefly in the uh, original um, steering article, that masterpiece. Some of whose authors are here, to, all of whose authors are here today. I won't embarrass them by naming them, but go and read it. It's brilliant. They talk about lots and lots of different types of steering. And, um, but most people are kind of taken away the one where you're like, oh, what kind of play do I want? including me, I had to go back and check that they had actually talked about this. They have. But I think weaving, as I'm calling it, is it's sufficiently interesting that it's worth looking at as a kind of a sub-phenomenon of steering. And what it is, is it's applying your off-game sensibility to in-game events. It's thinking, is it really OK for this stuff to happen within the game with my off-game head? Is there something that I need to do about that to stop um, the LARP being broken in some way, either in total or for some participants. So, and it's something that we, as experienced LARPers, we kind of do out of habit um, before holes start to appear. So someone might say, for example, oh goodness, another stabbing. Well, you know, the weather is so terrible, then it's not even worth thinking about calling the police, is it? Goes off and gets stabbed, you know. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's a nice bit of weaving, which means that any inexperienced LARPers who are present, perhaps, or LARPers from a different LARPing culture, where they would call the police like crazy, um, and expect an NPC to pick up the phone or something, who knows, um, they know that they don't have to do that because that little potential hole has been weaved over. 
Or it might be that, um, as a leader, you might say something like, you know, I should have your head for this disobedience, but I won't. Um, so reflect on my mercy. Go away and be a better person, rather than, rather than executing the, the subordinate and ruining their, potentially ruining their love. And um, we all probably do this. You can probably think of examples from your own play where someone's come up with an idea where, with your off-game head on, you realised it should not be allowed to happen, and you came up with an in-game reason to divert them from it. So perhaps they were like, oh, we should set fire to the enemy's tents and bring them out into the open. And you're like, huh? Well, actually, you know, there's a little bit of lore that I'm going to share with you, which is their tents are famously fireproof these days after a tragic accident under the last king. So we'll have to think of something a bit more cunning to get them out and have a real fight. So if everyone is on the same page, then it's not a big problem because we kind of take in these tropes and these things that we need to do and we enact them automatically as required, more or less. Um, and these weak circles of the magic circle don't get undue pressure <coughs> applied to them. But in international LARP, when you have people from different cultures and different LARPing backgrounds together, that's when you can have problems and one person's kind of hand waves airily. Usual practice can be another person's kind of needle scratch massive dissonance, and that's when this sort of reaction can happen. <laughs> so to, to sum up, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to sort of think in your own luck practice when you're a participant, when you're a designer, when you're an organizer, you know, where and when and how are you kind of, are you silently patching the magic circle or are you expecting participants, co-players to be silently patching around you? Um, how can we make sure that everyone at the LARP has got an explicit understanding of how and why this is happening to make sure that um, it is a circle of joy for everyone because in that circle is where the magic happens. <laughs> Thank you.